welcome to EC Electronics. This is a video on whatever filter design which is a 100% sure question in any DSP exam and this is done using bilinear transformation. Okay, so uh, I'm going to plan this video as various parts. In each of the part, we'll be doing different things. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to draw the Chiara or the magnitude response of a Butterworth filter from these conditions. Okay, so this is actually a very confusing thing to many of the students. So that's why I have div divided this video into different parts. So in this part or in this video, we are going to see how to draw the magnitude response of your Butterworth filter, which is satisfying these conditions. Okay, so uh, it is given in the question that design a Butterworth filter satisfying the conditions 0.707 less than or equal to h of e raised to j omega which is your magnitude response less than 1 4 0 less than or equal to omega less than or equal to pi by 2 and h of e raised to j omega less than or equal to 0 0.2 4 3 pi by 4 less than or equal to omega less than or equal to pi so this is actually more or less values these are magnitude responses so they are more or less values okay so it is given, there are two conditions given, right? So, what are actually the two conditions? We know that the general structure of your magnitude response for a Butterworth low pass filter will look like this. Okay. Anyway, this is a 100% or a 200% sure question. So, if you are going for DSP exam, please do watch all the parts of this video. Okay. So, uh, this is given that it is, it is what is uh, what is actually given in the conditions. The magnitude response is given, right? So, it is h of e raised to j omega. Here it is pi values. So, up to pi. Okay. So, the maximum value of this magnitude response, I am going to take it is 1. So, now if you see, it is given that from 0.7 to 1, the magnitude response uh, varies and for the, the values that is for the frequency values from 0 to pi by 2 that is for 0 to pi by 2 the value of the magnitude response lies in between these two values that is from 0.7 to 1 that is from 0.7 see if this is your 0.7 or 0 0.707 to 1 the frequency values is from 0 the 0 is here right 0 to pi by 2. So, this is actually what? This is the pass band. So, if you see, this is the pass band or the band of frequencies which your filter is actually allowing to pass. is called pass band. And this much of frequency, so for this much of frequency, the magnitude is from this range to this range. That is from 0.7 to 1. Okay. So, what is actually this pi by 2? This is the pass band edge frequency given in which domain in the digital domain because this omega if you see this frequency is in digital domain and the ohm frequencies are in analog domain so we'll talk about it later anyway you should know this thing the first condition is actually your pass band condition This is the pass band condition and this is your pass band edge frequency that is omega p is pi by 2. Don't get confused with omega and ohm. This is omega which is the digital frequency it is given as pi by 2. Now I hope it is clear that is this is the pass band condition this is your pass band edge frequency. So we have obtained pass band now we need what we need stop band. So what is so it is obvious that if it is pass band, this will be what? Stop band. Similarly, if you see the value of magnitude is less than 0 0.24, 3 pi by 4 to pi. So, from 3 pi by 4 to pi, the value is what? If you draw a point to here, it is 0 0.2. So, this represents your stop band. So, this is your pass band and this represents your stop band okay that is from 3 pi by 4 to pi your value is 0 0.2 
and from 0 to pi by 2 the value is from point, uh, 1 to point 0.7 or point 0.7 to 1. Okay, so you have got your pass band edge frequency. Now what will be your stop band edge frequency? Stop band edge frequency is actually the frequency from which your stop band is starting. That is from 3 pi by 4 the stop band starts. So which is your pass, uh, stop band edge frequency? So your omega s is 3 pi by 4. So from this two conditions we got two things. That is omega p equal to pi by 2 and omega s equal to 3 pi by 4. Okay, I hope this much is clear. So that is uh, mostly the questions if it is based on conditions it will be like this only that is they will be giving a pass band condition and they will be giving a stop band condition and you have to draw the magnitude response corresponding to those conditions and you have to actually identify the values of omega p and omega s. Now to design a Butterworth filter you need to know that Butterworth filters are generally frameworks of analog filters used for designing of digital filters. So we need the analog frequencies that is ohm p and ohm s we need to design the transfer function of your Butterworth filter. But we have only what? We have only omega p and omega s, right? So to convert this to the analog domain, we have two equations. That is the ohm p or the analog frequency is 2 by t tan of omega p by 2. Okay, also ohm s is equal to 2 by t tan of omega s by 2. Simple, right? So, what is the equation? Ohm p is equal to 2 by t, that is 2. t is 1, right? So, tan of omega p now is pi by 2. Okay, so pi by 2 by 2 is pi by 4. Tan pi by 4 is 1. So, omega p is, sorry, ohm p is 2. 2 watt radians per second is a unit. And, ohm s is, sorry, I get confused with omega p and ohm s, but, but I will write the correct only. So, ohm s is what? Ohm s is 2 by t, that is 2 into tan of, it is 3 pi by 4, by 2 means 3 pi by 8. And if you solve it, you will get us 4.824. Okay, so this is your ohm p and, sorry. Yeah, ohm p and ohm s. That is your frequencies of pass band stop frequency and uh, stop band, uh, sorry. Pass band edge frequency and stop band edge frequency in which domain? Analog domain. That is 2 radians per second and 4.824 radians per second. Okay, now we have ohm s and ohm p right we need to find the order of the butterworth filter to find the transfer function okay so the equation to find the order which we have discussed in our earlier video that is log of root 10 raised to 0 0.1 alpha s minus 1 by 10 raised to 0 0.1 alpha p minus 1 by log of omega sorry ohm s by ohm p. We have the ohm s and ohm p values and we need to find the numerator actually. So for that what uh, we are going to do is we are going to split this square root as two roots. Okay. So we can write it like this right. Okay. So this root is divided as two. So the numerator is root of 10 raised to 0 0.1 alpha s minus 1 and the denominator is 10 point uh, sorry, 10 raised to 0 0.1 alpha p minus 1. And take this root of 10 raised to 0 0.1 alpha s minus 1 as lambda. And take the root of 10 raised to 0 0.1 alpha p minus 1 as epsilon. Okay, so this is lambda and this is epsilon. So how can you replace this as so this can be replaced as log of lambda by epsilon, right? 
So how can you find the values of lambda and epsilon? Right, we need this lambda and epsilon to complete the root or to find the root. So this root is not equal to, it is actually greater than or equal to. Okay, you should know the correct equation. It should be n is greater than or equal to. Now, from the magnitude response, if you see this value, that is the magnitude corresponding to your pass band edge frequency is defined as 1 by root of 1 plus epsilon square. So, the magnitude value corresponding to the stop band edge frequency is defined as 1 by root of 1 plus lambda square. So, this this equation that is 1 by root of 1 plus epsilon square and 1 by root of 1 plus uh, 1 by root of 1 plus lambda square is obtained by substituting the pass band and stop band frequencies in your magnitude response equation. So you don't need to go for that theory part. Just know that the value on the magnitude axis corresponding to the pass band edge frequency is defined as 1 by root of 1 plus epsilon square. And the magnitude value corresponding to the stop band edge frequency is defined as 1 by a root of 1 plus lambda square. Now, if you have these two values, you can equate and find the value of epsilon and lambda, right? So, if you find the value of epsilon, that is, equate 1 by root of 1 plus epsilon square with 0 0.707 to find epsilon value and 1 by root of 1 plus lambda square with 0 0.2. Okay, and you will find the value of epsilon as epsilon will be obtained as 1 and lambda value will be obtained as 4.89. Okay, so this is actually by equating this two. By solving it, you will get epsilon as 1 and lambda as 4.89. So, substitute the values of lambda and epsilon in your order equation because you have this ohm s and ohm p values in your hand. See, it is here. And you have this epsilon and lambda. Now, you can easily find the values, value of your order, that is your n value by Substituting all these values in this equation and if you have your order, you can find your transfer function of the Butterworth filter. Okay, I hope this much is clear. What we have done in this part is that we have drawn this magnitude response and we have obtained the values of that is ohm p and ohm s and also epsilon and lambda from the magnitude response which is drawn by the conditions, the two conditions, that is the pass band condition and the stop band condition. And we, we are going to find the order. So this finding of order we'll be doing in the next part. And in the next part, we'll be finding the order of this and then we'll, we'll write the transfer function of the Butterworth filter. So there are various transfer function, uh, that is equations for various orders. We will be seeing that also in the next part. Okay, so I hope this much is clear. That is, I hope you understood how to draw the magnitude response and how to figure out the values from your magnitude response. So this point is corresponding. That is, this point in the magnitude axis corresponding to your pass band edge frequency is 1 by root of 1 plus epsilon square and this point is 1 by root of 1 plus lambda square. So this is like this for all the magnitude response. So you just need to buy hard these things and also this frequency is a pass band edge frequency and this frequency is the stop band edge frequency. So if you are given some conditions, you should be able to draw the magnitude response. You don't need to buy hard these things that is how to draw. You don't need to buy hard. Just looking at the conditions, you should be able to draw. Okay, so we will be seeing how to find that is uh, the value of the order we will be seeing the next part. Okay. So I hope you found this video useful for your DSP preparation. If yes, please do give it a thumbs up and also share this video with all your friends. And we will see in the next part of this video.